Welcome to Pixel Hobbies. Axio just released a new SX24 Jeep Gladiator. I'm really excited about this one as Axio has made few nice changes to the truck. And it begs the question, is this the best SX24 yet? So let's check it out. It comes in two colors, beige and a blue. And I went with the beige to be a bit different than my usual blue theme. And it sells for $150. The Jeep Gladiator is the fifth version of the SX24. First was the Deadbolt, then came the Jeep Wrangler, then the C10 version, and the limited B17 version. Here's the Jeep Gladiator with everything out of the box. Like the previous versions, it is truly ready to run as it comes with everything you need to start running it. It comes with batteries for the transmitter. It comes with 2S LiPo battery and a revised USB charger. Previously, I recommended not using the stock USB charger and instead charge with better LiPo charger as the stock USB charger was not very reliable, causing fires in some instances. We'll have to see how this one fares. It also comes with a small hex tool, size 0.50, and a short drive shaft, and a front body post mount if you want to convert to one. It has a small sheet of marketing material, a connector guide, and the manual. So what's different about the new Jeep Gladiator? There are a few differences other than the body design, which is now supporting a detailed Jeep Gladiator body. First is the longer wheelbase. It has been extended 22 millimeters to increase stability and allow a more scale fitment of the body. Currently is sitting at roughly about 155 millimeters long. The extended wheelbase should definitely improve crawling performance. Here's a C10 in comparison, and you can clearly see the difference in the overall lengths. The C10 is at 133 millimeters long. Second is the addition of scale interior and the scale driver, although it is probably tough to see through the tinted windows. It also includes Tough Stuff Overland Scare Accessory Pack. And the sand leather is actually even removable. A very nice touch. It also includes the Tough Stuff Overland Scale Accessory Pack. Sand letters, which can be removed. You can see a shovel and an axe, a jack, another shovel, and some gas tanks. Third is the lack of the front body posts. Axial decided to use Velcro mount instead of body posts. So the body is much cleaner, which is a nice change. The rear still uses a hinged design allowing for quick battery access, which works great. Fourth, is the change in the ESC receiver. It's not the same ESC receiver that was on the previous version. I'll test out the throttle response in the drag brake and see if there are any improvements during my test runs. Fifth, it comes with a brand new four channel receiver. It's much sleeker looking than the previous version. It has good ergonomics, but they move the steering wheel forward which means that if you have small hands, it's going to be a bit more difficult for a one-hand drive. The addition of the four-channel button is a nice change. This opens up for different channels for lights and winch if you desire. And lastly, I noticed that the springs on the rear shocks are firmer. Assume that Axial added a firmer springs on the rear in order to ensure that it can handle the increase in weight of the truck. 
There are some features that remain the same from the previous design. It still uses the steel C-channel frame rails. The axles continue to use steel front and rear drive axles, steel stub axles, and steel dog bones. It continues to use the warm drive for the front and the rear differential gears. It runs three link front and four link in the rear suspension. The motor is the same 88 turn motor and same 2S LiPo battery. Two LED lights in the front bumper. And finally, it supports officially licensed Nero Trail Grappler MT tires mounted to officially licensed KMC XD machete wheels. As for stock baseline, I'm also going to measure the baseline so we can identify what changes might be needed. And for that, I'm going to use Sky RC corner weight scale. As you can see, the Gladiator weighs 268.7 grams and he has 44% front and 56% rear weight distribution. In comparison to a stock C10 model, C10 weighed 230 grams and he had 52% front and 48% rear weight distribution. This means that it is going to need quite a bit of help to get to the ideal weight distribution of 60% front and 40% rear. As for the overall length, you can clearly see the longer wheelbase of Gladiator, which is a welcome change. The Jeep Gladiator is longer than even my stretched E1, which has 153 millimeters long. Except for the weight distribution, all the changes points to the Gladiator being the best SCX24 yet. Hope you enjoy the first look of the Jeep Gladiator and the baseline info on the stock form. I can't wait to get the Gladiator out on the rocks for full test. If you like the contents of this video, please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and also the notification bell to be notified of future videos. Thanks for watching Bigs and Hobbies.